Hello, everyone. Christian Hernandez here with Sports Video Group. We're back with our At The Rink series. We're going to head out west and speak with the San Jose Sharks. I am pleased to speak with Dustin Lamandola. He's the Director of Creative and Entertainment for the San Jose Sharks. Dustin, uh, how is the season so far? How's the weather in San Jose? Uh, yeah, how's the year so far for you and your crew? It's, it's been really fun. It's been really different. Um, weather is fantastic outside. It's hard to be in the building when the, when the weather's this good. Um, but yeah, it's been a, you know, a lot of interesting challenges, obviously working in, in silos and working in different groups and having a lot smaller of a staff. Um, but it's given us a lot of opportunities to try new things. Um, definitely have learned a lot about, you know, each co coworker working in these tight spaces. And um, as I had mentioned to you uh, through our emails and stuff, we, we started on the road um, for two months. Um, we were pretty abnormal there. Uh, the city uh, and the uh, Santa Clara County wouldn't um, let us do contact sports. So we took off December 30th and we were gone for two months for training camp and the first large chunk of games. Um, so it's been great now to be back and getting everybody back to work and, and working together. Um, been unique without fans, definitely some new things there to learn like crowd noise and things. And, um, you know, we were, we were on the sidelines for quite some time watching people do this in the league and watching Edmonton and Toronto do a great job through the playoffs last year and stuff and kind of, uh, having enough time to prepare, but, um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a unique experience that we'll all remember. That's for sure. You mentioned it. So we'll start there. You, your season started in probably the most unique scenarios as possible going on the road for such amount of times playing road games and home games. Uh, personally, and for people that you work with, how was that experience making sure content was still done and kind of making sure there was a buzz around the team, even though they actually weren't in the state of California? Yeah, it was a unique challenge. And obviously our fans hadn't seen us play hockey in quite some time. Uh, we didn't make the playoff bubble. So, you know, we, we really had been, you know, kind of missing for a bit there on the, on the ice. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was pretty standard when it came to practices and the stuff that our social media team and our video producers could do. Um, fairly standard, obviously some COVID re restrictions. The big thing for us um, is we lost our media day almost entirely. So um, that is where 85% of our production comes out of every year. So that was a, it was a very big loss for us. Um, we're not quite used to that. We're used to, you know, having on ice shoots with the players and having enough time. Uh, we lost all that. We did get an opportunity to sit the players down individually. Uh, my producer, Brendan Ergus was on the road and right. um, set up a, you know, a nice, uh, set up and, and I did the interviews uh, through Zoom uh, and he was in the room. Uh, so that was a unique experience. And, you know, I, I felt like our players, you know, rolled with it pretty well and kind of had fun with it, you know, and, and knew it was a, a different challenge for us, but we're good sports. So that was, that's been a big change for us internally when getting our minds around the season. We don't often or at all use last year's assets. That's just not kind of how we roll. Right. Uh, and so we're always looking for the new assets and trying to make our, our new look and trying to beat ourselves really. That's, you know, we kind of try to set the bar for ourselves. We go to idea conference and see what all these, you know, other teams have really done. That's amazing. And, and, and we try to, you know, we try to trump ourselves and do the best we can. This year was, you know, it's kind of like eating dirt a little bit on that and not having that opportunity. Um, but, you know, it was a challenge for the production team to look at last year's assets and, and make something out of it. Uh, it's our 30th anniversary. Um, so you'll notice in a lot of our content that the 30th patch is unfortunately not represented because we didn't have that opportunity. Um, so we're slowly but surely kind of, you know, producing that content in. But I would say that 30th you know, the, the fact that it's our 30th year has really given us some opportunities because we don't have to just look at our players and just look at the games that are happening in front of us. Right. That's a good thing to have in a COVID year, I, I think, is we've really had the opportunity to use Zoom calls, use, you know, remote technology to touch base with a lot of the athletes who played for us. And a lot of our philosophy for the 25th was we wanted to get guys who we could get into the building because we think our fans physically seeing these guys after, you know, years being gone is really powerful to have right. them back in the moment, drop the puck. Um, because we couldn't do that, it actually opened the door a little bit to my mind thinking of, okay, who haven't we spoken to that lives in Europe or lives in Canada that has a day job that can't right. just 
lie down here. And so we've actually touched base with a lot of athletes that um, that we wouldn't have maybe talked to and, and used remote technology to do so. So that's been helpful. Well, that's a, a positive. If there is a positive side to the pandemic, it's one of these that you get to yeah. touch base with people that you wouldn't be able to travel in. Um, aside from the kind of the historical content and touching base to your past, uh, as you mentioned, you guys are, are one of the most prolific and well celebrated uh, in venue experiences throughout the league, uh, whether you go to idea or whatnot, or, or you speak to your colleagues, but what is it like inside SAP center right now without fans there? Are you still doing stuff for your fans? You mentioned before we had the, we started the, the, the call here that you're opening the door for the team. So there's some kind of workarounds <laughs> that you're working with. How's it like on a, on a game day in, in San Jose? Yeah, it's um, like you said, a lot of all hands on deck. Um, there's only a few of us who are allowed in the team bubble. Uh, I happen to be one of them. So we're wearing a lot of different hats. Um, we're kind of running around doing a lot of different jobs and, 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 really working as a team. Our, our PR staff, I, I give them so much credit. They've probably done 20 jobs I never thought they would ever do, uh, you know, in the course of a season. And, you know, they're just making it work. And, and, and that's been really great. As far as the entertainment aspect, we've really tried, we've really tried to keep that entertainment level as high as we can for the players, but without being a distraction. So a right. bit of a middle ground there. Um, as most people probably experience around the league is players don't necessarily love hearing their voice on the, you know, center hung when they're on the bench, but obviously you got to entertain the fans. So a lot of times that's something we do. Um, That's something we've obviously chosen to not do this year. There's, there's no one to entertain and there's no reason to uh, poke poke the players uh, unnecessarily there. So um, the big thing for us is, is really being able to go uh, into music that they more prefer. We've worked really heavily with them in the past about pregame warmup, but now we've been able to do it more. So volume levels, things like that, um, that are, you know, something the players often like to talk to me about. We've been able to really focus on them and that's, that's been really nice. Um, we're obviously very hopeful to have fans, um, as soon as humanly possible, because the dynamic in the bowl is completely different. Our our team, um, you know, we have technology and we have a good team. We don't have our fans and our fans are 90% of the experience for me personally. So I can't wait to have them back in, uh, crowd noise is universally looked at as helpful for the, for the players. It's obviously fake crowd noise and it doesn't quite give you the energy that you're looking for. But, um, but through music and crowd noise, we'd have, we've been able to keep that up. We've made opens for every one of our um, specialty or every one of our jerseys. So we have a teal open, we have a reverse retro open, and then we have a, um, a heritage open. So the heritage is something that we are super excited about. We love that Jersey internally. And it's just something really fun that uh, when they take the ice and that it reminds me of, being a kid growing up in the Barry and watching the Sharks play. So uh, you're trying to make memories without fans in there. Uh, you're also trying to take the experiences that usually people would be in person for and kind of translating it to, I guess, a digital virtual setting. What did you, what have you guys done? And what, I guess, are you guys doing to make sure those opportunities are still there for fans on a, on a different, uh, different platform, may it be digital or live stream content and things of that nature? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think that's universally through the league and, and through sports um, or actually even probably most businesses at this point. Um, but we, we really have done the digital approach. That was really what we did. We took almost every single arena asset. Um, we laid them out on you know a table over the course of weeks, looked at what can translate really well to digital, um, what needs to be crafted in a different way. Um, what actually could look better? Um, there's a couple of things we've taken out of arena in arena um, and made into something digital and been able to have that experience be a little deeper. Um, one example that I'm thinking in my head is um, we have uh, Kaiser Future Sharks and it's a program we have where the kids generally come out and play at intermission and we do um, we do a little feature in game about two of the players, one from each team. That's a very unique experience for these kids to play on the ice. And we're so saddened that they're not getting that opportunity. But what we've done with the digital activation has been able to show more of the the team. Instead of just focusing on one kid, we've been able to show a little bit more of the other kids and show the whole team um, digitally, which, you know, I I hope is, is a little, you know, 
expansive for that team and gives everyone a little bit of, you know, moment in the sun, but obviously not getting an opportunity to play at a Sharks game is a big, big loss for them. So um, there's been some activations that have uh, been very easy and very smooth to transfer over. And then some that, you know, we just had to rethink. And there's actually even been a few uh, sponsors where we touched base with them they agreed with us that really going digital or changing that experience really isn't best. So we're really kind of on hold for them. We've either found another way to do something for them through social media or through creative services, right. or we've really just had an agreement with them. We're going to continue this in arena as soon as we have fans and, and we'll go from there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sponsorship is, seems to be kind of a universal challenge that everyone is seeming to yes. have it to go through when you can integrate it on digital. If, it, if it's not working in venue, how do you kind of rethink it? So uh, interesting to see what you guys are doing in San Jose. But before I let you go, Dustin, time for some shout outs, uh, whether it be the whole crew or a few in mind, like you said, you wear a lot of hats. So there are probably people on both sides of in venue or digital that you'd like to give. Yeah. Back. Yeah. There's an amazing amount of people. I mean, for us, uh, you know, in the SJ Sharks production side of things, uh, the first people I love to thank is the PR staff. Uh, they absolutely were, you know, Scott Emmer and his group are just so open to our crazy ideas and, and, and are never closing a door on us until we get through the pitch. And then they find a way to make it work and maybe tame down some of the crazy, but they're very helpful with us at all times. And like I said before, they've worn so many hats. It's unbelievable. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, for, for me in arena, uh, Daniel Bell has, this is his first year, very, very strange year to take over event presentation directing for us, um, but he's done a great job. Um, Cameron, Cou Cameron Couch is our, uh, is our coordinator for event presentation, and he's now running crowd noise audio. He's running game scripts everywhere. His job has completely changed, but he's been really awesome about, you know, putting on a different hat every night and kind of getting things done. And on my production side, we're, we're short staffed on the production side. So for Brendan Ergus and, and, and Jay Kindall, who are both my producers, they're working their tail off. And then lastly is, is in creative services, the other side we see and, and Whitney Hollock is in Incredible at keeping her staff going and the amount of work that they generally do has obviously risen like we talked about bringing those digital activations and, and trying to get those to social has really been something that has been quite a challenge, not to mention how much messaging about safety and right. protocols and those kind of things that we've, we've really tried to work together so yeah it's it's a team effort all the way around we're super supported here by our marketing director Doug Benz here in San, San, San Jose so that's something that you know when you get that lucky to have that opportunity to have people who really support what you're trying to do is is something powerful oh terrific well dustin uh i can first say glad the team's home you can enjoy some home cooking and yeah. the bed and all that stuff you can enjoy the family time uh and most importantly stay safe stay healthy keep up the great work out in san jose and hopefully when it's safe enough take a flight over to california and say hello yeah we'd love to have you out that'd be great